March 5th, 2022, we're going to have the Big Mama Crappie Bass Tournament on Lake Washington in Mississippi. And one of our sponsors is uh, the Mississippi Army National Guard. And we happen to have uh, Major Anthony Harold here. And, and it's pretty exciting because actually Tesla, right? Tessa. Tessa is uh, here and she's actually going to ask some of the questions because she's interested in joining. I know that in the National Guard y'all have different jobs for people. What exactly are those jobs? There's a large variety. Um, you can become an engineer. Um, you, can, you can become a doctor if you wanted to. Um, so it's a, it's a huge scale from, from being a cook uh, to being an air defense defender uh, to being uh, building buildings. We'll, so, we'll teach you the skills that we need you to learn uh, based on how you score on the ASVAB. Yep, yeah, that was going to be my next question, the ASVAB, like, that was what I was going to ask. Um, what exactly is y'all score to get into the National Guard? Well, every, every uh, job skill has a different level of mm -hmm. score. So you take the ASVAB and it's a mix of questions. A lot of people think it's going to be like the ACT, and it's it's not. Um, but what we do is we try to see what what is your strong suit. Um, if you're good mechanically, well, we want to put you in a job that is mechanical. Uh, if you're good electrically, we want to put you in a job where you can be an electrician. Um, so it really is a variety of scores. So ultimately, it's not a pass or fail. It's, it's take take it, show us what your capabilities are and what your strong suit is, and then we'll find the job for you. Was well, um, there is there any qualifications? You have to have a, a high school diploma. Is there any things like that? You do have to have um, a high school diploma or a GED. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and you you have to be in in decent health. Obviously, um, not everybody can be part of this organization. And I always use the, the example that Jerry Rice is physically fit. I mean, he is a be a prime candidate to be part of this organization. But he had a knee surgery, mm -hmm. and that knee surgery, because of pins and screws, disqualifies him from being part of this organization. Because it is physical. There are times where you're doing physical type things, so uh, you have to be in in decent shape. You have to be physically healthy. Mm -hmm. So, obviously, psychologically, um, we have to test and make sure that there's not any psychological issues there um, that, that could pose a problem. Um, so, and just overall general health. How is basic training for the National Guard? Because isn't it different for the like Marines and Navy? Isn't basic training different for? All the other ones. Well, I'm glad you asked that question. That's, that's really a good question because a lot of people have this misconception that, that, that it's extremely hard. Mm -hmm. And each one of them have their variations, um, but they're all pretty, pretty similar. Um, ultimately, basic training is, is more about bringing a team together. So they may fuss at you, they may yell, they may make you do push-ups and sit-ups, but they're not going to eat you. They're not going <laughs> to kill you. Their goal is to make you successful. But along the way, they want you and everybody else there to become a, a cohesive team. And when you do that, they take off pressure. They don't yell at you as much. They don't make you do push-ups as much. Ultimately, the goal is to bring you all together to work as one because you depend on each other. Has there ever been any problems at basic, like, do you go in and monitor people at basic training too? I don't, uh, but there are people that are there. Mm -hmm. There are people that that's what they do uh, for a living. They're full-time instructors at basic training. Uh, so you have drill sergeants that are there. They may not be there 24 and seven, but they will monitor you and check on you and surprise you in the middle of the night to make sure people are not up running around acting foolish. Um, but 
you know, ultimately they're there to supervise and teach and, and show you how to become a team. How was your experience during basic training? When you met? Um, at the time, <laughs> it, it was stressful. It was, and they want it to be stressful. And the reason is anything worth doing, mm -hmm. it's going to be hard. Otherwise, everybody would do it. Um, so it's going to be stressful. But you have to you have to keep the mindset that okay they're not gonna kill me I'm gonna get through this I just gotta do what I'm supposed to do and at the end of the day I'm gonna graduate and I'm gonna start a career and I'm gonna get the training that I need um, looking back on it after I got through it I thought to myself that wasn't so bad <laughs> yeah I, it seemed hard at the time but when you get through it you it's pretty cool like that that actually was awesome uh, so a lot of people are surprised um, most people the reason why they don't get in the military or in the guard is out of fear fear for what they don't know I'm glad I don't, I don't feel fear like well, I do but I know that's what I want to do so I try to like get people to tell me stories that will make me scared so I'll be like Okay, so now I feel like this is what's probably going to happen. I don't felt the pain through it here just by hearing the story. Well, the fear by hearing the story, so maybe I can get through it in real life. That's right. Well, that's the kind of person we need. And so after after they go through boot camp, what's what happens to the individual after that? Okay, so what's once, the process? Once they complete boot camp, um, they'll go to their um, MOS training. So uh -huh. a school, a job skill training. So if they want to be an electrician, they're going to go to a specific uh, military school where they're going to teach you all the electrician type skills. Uh, and it goes for any other MOS. You're going to go to that specific school where they're going to focus that attention on that skill. And they're going to teach you everything you need to know to be proficient in it. Once you finish that, you'll come back to your unit and then you'll do that job. Um, you'll train to be prepared for if if we have a hurricane or a tornado or something like that to go and do make sure that all the air conditioners working and all the tents for the soldiers who are there working or help people. Um, if, does that make sense? So you, you're yeah. basically going to do that job during your drill weekends, during your summer camp or if you get called for a deployment. What about like where people get stationed at? Do they have a pick in where they get stationed at or is that up to the, the, other, the higher man? No, well it depends on again the job. Mm -hmm. um, what slot you get put in based on the job that you want to do or you qualify to do. Mm -hmm. um, there are units all over the state. and So depending on that slot you'll go to a unit that has that job opening and and you'll be let's say you're in Tupelo or you could be on the Gulf Coast or you could be in Jackson or you could be right here in Greenville um, so it just depends on the job that, that uh, your ASVAB says you qualify for and that you choose uh, you may qualify for multiple jobs and then you can make a selection on I'd rather do this than this so if we have those slots that are opening, then we'll put you in that slot and that's what you'll get trained on and that's the unit you'll go to. It's not outside of Mississippi. You belong to the Mississippi Army National Guard. Unlike the reserves, the National Guard serves Mississippi. And then if there's a need for a federal deployment and the president says, I need this type of unit well he reaches out to the governor and the governor says okay I have that type of unit y'all are going here you go as a family unlike the reserves where if the president says I need this type of unit well the reserves say okay I've got five guys from Alaska I got five guys from Hawaii I got five guys from New York however many they need we're bringing them all together we put them in a unit and we send them so you may be working with people you don't know. The National Guard's not like that. It's going to be your family that you grow up around in your community or in that unit. 
and that's the other thing it's it becomes like a family an extended family um, that, and that's really what I love about it I've been in 33 years and I've done a lot of different jobs um, and the military the National Guard will allow you to grow to do more things if you choose to um, if you put forth that effort they're gonna they're gonna let you get more skills just like I was enlisted for 19 years before I went through OCS to become an officer it was a challenge but I saw it as something I wanted to do and it, it was the best decision I had made in my career so so what about the people who decide to go on active do they get to the side or do they just automatically go on to active duty no if you're part of the Mississippi National Guard mm -hmm. you don't go on active duty unless unless the governor or um, the tag the adjutant general for the state needs has a need for them people to, to okay. go on active duty now if you choose to leave the National Guard because you want to serve on active duty mm -hmm. you can you can request to be released from the Mississippi National Guard in order to join the active duty army um, in order to to be deployed or to be stationed in another state or whatever um, so you have that option at some point in your training and your your career if you want to go and do bigger uh, and do it every day then then you just have to request to be released and then go through the process is it a difficult process have you ever did have you ever went active before I've been I've deployed to Afghanistan. I've deployed to Washington D.C. Um, I volunteered for a deployment during the first Gulf War, and I deployed to a hospital because I was a lab tech at the time. Um, and I worked because they had deployed so many hospital people. They were short at civilian hospital or army hospitals, and so I went there to work to, to help them do the job. Um, so. That, and, and honestly, when I come over to the Army from the Air Force, I came because I wanted to deploy. And I got that opportunity when I went to Afghanistan. It was, it was one of the neatest experiences. Is it beautiful and like adventurous? And you it is definitely adventurous. Yeah. I, I can't say it's Afghanistan is, you know, it is what it is, but uh, it's very dusty and. Um, but they, does it. You being able to see the world, does it make you feel like, like you, you know? Oh yeah, I have seen so many things. I, I've, I've been to probably half, if not three quarters of the states in the United States. I've been to uh, the West Indies, which is an island uh, in the Mediterranean, uh, to do a humanitarian effort to build a community center and to teach the, the people in that on that island how to do medical service um, obviously I've been to Afghanistan and I've seen and done so many things that I never would have had the opportunity any other way and so you know those are memories that will always be with me and meeting all the new people and it just I bet it's amazing. It is amazing. I have friends all over the world because of the years that I've been in and, and the people I've met. And, and I have a family in Mississippi that is almost 9,000. Uh, so not many people other than guardsmen can say that. Uh, so I can call any one of them if I need something and they will be there for me. And, the, and the great thing about this is you're going to have an opportunity to come and visit with um, Major Anthony Harold uh, at the uh, at the March tournament. Of course, you'll be here, right? Yes, you'll be. Uh, yes. You're gonna go through the obstacle course, I, right? I want to. <laughs> there you go. She's gonna she's gonna go through all those things. But you know that is the opportunity, and we're we're excited about about them coming and being part. If they want to just check it out, where would they go? Where would she go and check more and have more information? You can go to a, a website. Uh, nationalguard.com forward slash ms uh, I'll give you this card and you can it's got that website on there Thank um, you. or you can just google us on, on 
Google and look for Mississippi Army National Guard. We have a home page and we have a Facebook page and it tells you anything you want to know about the National Guard. There you go. We're going to be at Lake Washington, Mississippi. Make sure you check us out. Uh, we're going to be at Bait and Things. That's where they're going to have uh, all the uh, equipment, I guess I want to say. But yeah. they're going to have all the uh, all the stuff's going to be there and uh, you'll be there and maybe some other uh, representatives. That's right and uh, make sure you check it out we appreciate you being Thank part you. of it and jumping in having some great questions so uh, like i said make sure anything that you have just send it his way and he'll be able to answer uh, your questions thank you thank you thank you